Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greg and uh, I'm doing something new today. We're gonna try to do uh, kind of like a photo vlog, but more like an edit with me. And I posted a photo, actually I'll show you which photo it was. Uh, I posted this photo on Instagram and I made a short video in my channel a couple weeks ago about getting this shot and kind of the stuff I did in order to get it. And I got a lot of questions about not only one, how I, got this shot but also then how I edited this shot and uh, I made a video a while back about my new iPad and I've started editing all my photos with Lightroom CC on my iPad. Um, there's still a couple things every once in a while I'll throw on my computer but the vast majority of my edits they happen right here and so um, I wanted to make a short video I'm sharing with you guys how I went through this process, how I edited this photo, how I got to this final look. Um, as you can see here, here's the before image and the after. So before and after. I didn't really do a ton. I like to try to get as much right in the camera as possible, but I did do some tweaks. And so let's jump in and take a look at those things. All right, so there we go. Um, this is the finished product. And to be honest, there there's not a lot of uh, change or adjustment that went into uh, editing this. Um, I really try hard with my photography to not have to do a lot of editing so I focus really hard in trying to get uh, really good shots right off the bat and uh, so this is the finished product and uh, here is a copy of the shot straight out of camera. In this shot I was really focusing right here um, we can zoom in here. I was focusing right here on the white part of this milk, the brightest part, and I was using uh, spot metering and that really exposed just for this center part and uh, let the rest of it just be as dark as um, it wanted to be kind of. And so I was trying to get this look where uh, the highlight from the window was just centered right on this part of the milk as David was pouring and everything else just kind of fell off and not only blurred away but then fell off into the shadows and the editing technique I went for darkened everything even a little bit more and accentuated that highlight a little bit more. So we're going to jump into it here and uh, kind of look at exactly what was done in order to make this photo become this finish, finished product here. All right. And so I usually always start right here in the uh, exposure section in the light uh, dealing with exposure, contrast, highlights, and shadows. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of what I did in order to pull this shot off. And so just something to keep in mind is when you're editing in the light panel here, it edits the entire photo. So if I crank the exposure all the way up, it, you'd be able to bring a lot more from those shadows in. Um, that's not necessarily what I was going for, but just to show how one move here affects the image as a whole. So I do start off by bringing this exposure up slightly. Um, I really want this highlighted part to be clear and bright. Um, and then I'll bring this contrast just slightly. I don't usually do super contrasty stuff, but some people really like it. So uh, I've been starting to add just slightly more contrast in my photos than normal. Then I really want the highlight just on this cup in this uh, part to be highlighted. The highlight on here and on his hand, I want to try to minimize that. So I'm going to bring these highlights uh, down quite a bit, um, probably right around to 60, somewhere in there. Uh, and as you can see, that just darkens up the highlight on his hand up here and the highlight on the pitcher as he's pouring. So right around there. Um, I'll leave the shadows. In a lot of my editing, I bring up the shadows because I like to have a lot more visually in the picture, a lot more detail in the picture. but because I was going with this version or this style of editing, I decided to keep the shadows out of it. Um, I will bring down the bring down the whites just just a hair, and then uh, I'll actually pump these blacks up quite a bit. Uh, and as you can see, that kind of lightens up everything in the frame, something around there. Then I like to jump into uh, your curves, and so we'll jump into curves here and. I didn't do anything too crazy on here. Um, I always like to set an anchor point right in there and then um, you have your one on your end and then I set one right in here somewhere. And so it's really in and really cool to have kind of that faded look. And so I kind of went with that in this photo, not um, huge. So if you really want to get that faded look, people tend to crank this way up there and you have this kind of like washed out, really nice kind of muted look. I don't want to go that crazy. Um, I just want a little bit of it right here. So I'll bring it right up in here somewhere. And then 
to even out the blacks and make them a little deeper, I will pull this down slightly just right around there and it just makes the rest of those blacks fall off really nicely. So we can turn that back off. Then we'll jump into the color section here. Um, I will actually bring down the warmth a little bit. So I want to add kind of some blueiness uh, to the overall photo. Bring some blues into his shirt. Um, I really like how it contrasts with the warmth of the Cortado itself. So bring those down a little bit, um, around 5100. I'll turn the tint, I'll double tap that to reset it, and then I'll actually pull it back down to zero. I want the, the blue in his shirt to kind of pop a little bit more, so I'll turn up the vibrance of that to about 13, and then I will pull down the saturation to about negative six. That's just, that's tends to be my normal. I don't like overly saturated, and I like boosts of color from vibrance. Uh, and but a little bit of a desaturated look. So we'll do that. We'll jump into the effects panel and uh, I like doing the faded look with clarity. I know clarity is easy to go really overboard with um, but in this particular photo especially it, it really makes the glass of the Cortado stand out through here. So we will pump this up um, to right around I don't know right around there somewhere. Um, and then uh, we'll bring do a, a negative vignette here just to darken up those corners a little bit. Um, sometimes I'll play with split toning in the effects here. Uh, I don't think I will this time. Um, I think there's enough going on in this picture already that uh, I don't need to do that. I'll go back into color here for a second. And I forgot to mess with my mix. Doing color mix here. And uh, so I don't want my reds to stand out too much. So I'll bring those down. See how it, in his hand right there, you can really see the, the reds in his hand kind of fade off. So we'll do that. We will bring down the oranges just slightly and uh, bring down the luminance of those. It just makes this counter kind of disappear. Go into the yellows and uh, We'll bring down the yellows quite a bit here, um, right around there. We want those yellows to look more orange, it just makes that Cortado stand out really well. So we'll go something like that. And then I don't like greens in my photos much at all. And in fact, I don't think there's much green. There is kind of a green hue to everything. So we will... You can really see the change of the green down through this cup here, or the pitcher here. So we'll take subtract all of that. We'll pull those things down. So it just gets rid of that, makes it more just focusing on that kind of bluish in his shirt and orange in the cup. Bring that blue luminance around there. So that's probably pretty good for our color mixing. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Then we'll go into detail here. Um, just slightly more sharpening. Keep everything else the same. Um, and then on optics, we can turn on lens correction if we want, because I want the rest of the fo photo to kind of be dark around the edges. I will leave it off. And uh, I think that's getting pretty close. So I think the only thing left we have to do, just looking at my finished product because I've done this once already. We want to bring some brightness into that. And we'll, so we'll actually do that um, with do a selective edits. We'll go add and we'll just paint some in here. So we'll paint just in this portion here, maybe a little bit coming down here. We just want to both brighten this up. So we'll bring our exposure up a little bit in that just to highlight that. We'll boost the highlights a little bit in there. Uh, probably increase the contrast slightly and then for some reason it's looking a little dull and so we're gonna give it a little more orange just in that part there and uh, I think we're getting pretty close so that's usually how I start um, and that's a good first run through I will typically go through light color effects detail um, do selective edits and then I will start back over so I go back into here 
and make any other adjustments that I think may need to happen. Like I think there could be slightly more exposure, um, maybe even slightly more contrast. Keep those highlights down, keep the shadows, drop those blacks maybe just a little bit more. Um, but I'll typically go through this a couple more times, get it kind of where I want it. And uh, I don't know, I kind of like saying that no photos finished. I like to go back and edit old photos and kind of see how they've changed over time, how my editing style has changed over time. And uh, and yeah, guys, that's, that's kind of my process for editing on the iPad. Um, it's nothing special. Boom, we did it. That's the finished product right there. And uh, that was fun. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. It was really just a quick edit. Um, if you'd like me to do more of like a breakdown video of like what each of the sliders do and how to do it, I can do that. Honestly, I'm not super experienced with photo editing. It's just something I've started doing. Kind of like with photography, editing photos is you just learn by doing. You can watch as many videos online as you want. You can buy presets online, but until you actually dive in and choose and make conscious decisions of why are you changing edits, you won't fully understand the art that goes into editing. Also, I would recommend getting a printer because things print different. And there's something about having photos in your hand and being able to compare them and look at them while they're in your hand as opposed to just on a screen. I know the majority of people use screens these days and that's fine. Um, but there is something to printing your photos. If you'd like to see more of these type of videos, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing if you're new, leaving a comment with a question if you have one down below, and uh, I can definitely make more of these edit with me videos. Every single photo I post is edited, so I can make one for every single photo, or if there's a specific photo you'd like me to do a edit with me, uh, let me know. Anyways guys, hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.